Go Reesings! I am Lies and I use she, her. And I am Scandal and I use they, them. And let's play a game together! Alright! <clears throat> okay, So I... we have... We're trying to make some adjustments. If the character is supposed to be irritated, we're gonna try to figure that out. I've just... So I just, Coming in from our last episode, I'm gonna dig in with irritation more than anger because that can make sense. Or frustration. Frustration. Like that sort of confused frustration because anger feels very directed to me. Yeah. Not as much like I just don't understand overwhelm. So I'm gonna go more with that direction and see if that seems to fit the character better until we get more exposition from the story. Yes. Let's see. Um, that would be. Yeah, you, you'll jeopardize both of us with your curiosity. I'll not allow it. They make to tear up the letter. Uh, stop it! I shout, grabbing after the letter, catching Ilara's wrists with both hands. They lean away, holding their arms up and back, pulling me right into them. We lose our balance and tumble down, uh -huh. twisting around as we go, crashing onto into the floor. Look at that. Okay, that's more art. That's really cute. It's really good. I'm really sorry that you're both falling onto the floor in like an exhaustive situation that is basically life or death. And it's like you're both worn out to shit and trying to focus on other things and don't know what's going on. Let's have a tussle now. Oh, does, does, does Vin actually have like several parallel bar piercings on their face? Um, oh, they do. So there's one like across here? the bridge, and there's actually one up here in the middle too, like right between their eyebrows, like right here. See, I do you that see was that? Just a center one. That's what I'm and saying. Then that's a bar. Yo, know, that's what I'm saying. Like, but there's like a parallel bar here, and, and then, then there's one up stud. here. Then there's like yeah, a stud here, and then there's obviously the one in their lip. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I. But I'm like, hang on. Yeah, more piercings. Ah, because I didn't see that in the uh, picture. I'm not remembering. That either, but yeah, that's it also could cool. be that it sort of bled into uh, the the other spots. Yeah, levels. I'm still just like you have spots, and I love it. The spots are great; they're so good. Um, but that's <laughs> the level between again, like it, this, is very clear. I am grumpy and angry, and I am just sort of concerned. Going like here we go again. Uh, it's more of this. All right, um, crashing into the floor, the weight of them squeezes the air right out of me. A yelp. Wincing. It's a very nice couch. Honestly, still loving the crap out of the artwork. It looks beautiful. It's very charming. Their incredulous gaze softens a little. Are you hurt? I... Are we looking at them? I thought we'd still be looking at the letter. I know, go flailing after the letter. Are you hurt? I think there was kind Taking of... enough to... Actually, I love that where you're already still slamming all over each other, and then in the middle of it you go, ow! And so there's this... And are then you they hurt? freeze. They're like, oh god, are you hurt? Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, it really does seem like Ilar cares about you, you know? Oh, yeah. Actually, quite a lot. The letter drifts down next to us. Their eyes are still on me. It's my chance. <laughs> they, are you okay? You, I have one goal. One goal! My hand shoots out towards the letter, but Ilar's no slouch. Their hand landing on top of mine before I can take it. I'm trying to wiggle my hand out from under theirs when a shock hits me. It hits me in my palm. Apparently, Ilar felt it too. We stop and see a glow through the flesh of my hand. I then remember the symbol. We stare at each other as a feeling of lightness fills my head. Ilar's eyes droop and their tense body starts to relax into mine. Oh, uh, what did you do? Did you hurt hit them? That, did you did you knock them out? I don't know, but I'm also like, I feel like this is all over the place, going the, I'm after this thing, now I'm paying attention to you, now I'm this other, th I don't even know, I'm like, I, I'm not sure where to focus here because it seems like it goes back and forth between this is about the letter and um then this is you know about the shock thing and then we're thinking about the symbol and then it's i st stare at you you know I st and then it's like let's look at each other rather than i'm going to think about the symbol or about the letter i completely lose focus and go back to go to something else uh -huh. but also the level of you know um their uh, their incredulous gaze softens means that Ven's looking at them. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm like, Ven's attention is definitely divided. Oh, that's strange. The electricity is moving through me. My arm, now my shoulder, my head. What is... Oh. Oh. A cool silence fills me. Vast space opens up within pushing away the heat of the room. Spots of light in front of me swell and shimmer, joining together in larger pools, drowning out the lines, easing away edges and shapes until light is all I see. 
In lightness, I float, breath coming through an opening atop my head, miles away, feeling- Miles wild, wide. Sorry, miles wide. <laughs> oh, it's the whale again. Filling a breast that's miles deep. I am this lumini? Lumini? Lumine space. Lumine, thank you. Uh, lumine? Uh, I am this lumine space. Could be looming lumine. I think it's actually another made up word. Uh, colored spots dance in front of me. Emerald, the green of dreams. A garden. Leaves rustle, cicadas sing. The grass is cool against my back. A soft breeze brushing my hair. The air shimmers with muffled words from someone and snorting laughter from me. I look up. A face resolves into clarity. It spreads into a raucous laughter. Ilar? I try to say something, but I what? Okay. Grammar wise, it is a raucous laugh or raucous laughter, not a raucous laughter. It's, yes, it's one or the other. You either drop the A or just drop the E. Sorry, that really threw me the for, T-E-R. I was like, whoa, into a raucous laughter. Laughter is multiple. Right. Laugh. Laughter is just multiple laugh. laughs. Many. Many laughs. Repeated, you have, you have the voice of a thousand tongues. Uh, yeah, it's like, whoa. I try to say something, but then realize that I can only watch. Ilar is sprawled on their back. One arm, a folded cushion for their head. You mean I'm, over their head? <laughs> uh, the picture does not necessarily reflect the words. Okay. Oh, uh, little disclaimer at the bottom. The images do not necessarily reflect the words. I, that looks wildly different. Mm-hmm. All right. Ah, uh, sprawled on their back, one arm folded, a folded cushion for their head. I'm lounging next to them, enjoying the cool shade of the tree on a sweltering summer's day. Vim. A sing-song voice calls me. Heat on my wrist, fingers traveling across the back of my hand. Their eyes peer out from longer, lush eyelashes. I mean, they do have some brilliant eyelashes. They really do. A coy smile pulling the corner of their lips, revealing a dimple. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was not thinking. I retort playfully, pulling my arm free. Ilar rolls over with a grunt and lazily shakes their head to... Their snakes their hand. Thank you. I'm like, whoa, hang on. And lazily snakes their hand to the side of my neck. The heat of their skin and the toasty air combined is unbearable. God, that thing where you're like, I would love to cuddle you and I'm going to die of heat. Even any contact at all is just sweat pooling immediately. Ugh, stop that. You are cheating. Memory me wriggles pointlessly. My head feels pleasantly fuzzy. Huh? Was this how close we were? I'm saving your life is what I'm doing! But I start to protest. No. Their thumb starts tracing circles on my throat. Slow, excruciating circles. We had a deal. The rest of the day off. You need to rest and also please spend time with me. Please. I hear myself mumble of vague agreement. Their hand pulls away, leaving equally excruciating absence. That's it. Thank Lura. I couldn't have kept that up if I wanted to. They say, collapsing back into the grass, <clears throat> sighing theatrically. Ah. Light blooms. Hang on. Light blooms. Shapes melt together. Voices Fate. Sorry for that. We've never actually seen the screen like just shift up. I think actually there's been one other instance of it. Yeah, that's and so I was like, is this all new? Happened. And I just lost the time and rescued me. Yeah, you're fine. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, I got really confused there too. <laughs> I find myself on the hard floor. The cicada song replaced by depressions buzzing. Okay, but like that is just so real. I was <laughs> off in a place either thinking or planning or remembering something pleasant or daydreaming and then just depression comes crashing back in. Reality, right. as it were. That name is just hitting so much harder than I expected. There we go. A sense of loss hits me like a punch in the gut. Ilar's weight, too. My fingers travel to my neck, tracing the memory. My eyes sting. Ilar inhales sharply. Their body heaves with quickened breaths. Their heat brings echoes of the memory back to me. Ilar? They seem to realize where they are, where I am, 
They scramble to their feet. Awkward animo moment of, oh, I'm on top of you, aren't I? I also love that too. That means you both got dragged into the into the view of the memory. Yeah, like yeah. no escape. No escape. That is what the the function of this thing is. It's a little crystallized piece of memory. Uh huh. Interesting that that memory seemed to have nothing to do with the letter itself. I really do wonder if you're actually like, what if it's more complex than that? It's going like, here is the abyss devara. You've summoned it, but actually that's the way your brain has basically sort of made your sort of death state or your I guess I will say like your suicide basically attempts okay. uh, like that's what it looks like and Lara is in your head trying to save you from killing yourself yeah could be. like going I keep getting caught up in you and the reason why you keep stumbling across memories little notes little whatever is because it's your mind you're in your own head you're in your own head yeah and so you're stumbling across your old life and the reason and that I'm might be why to... you're so obsessed with trying to figure out what the hell is going on is because that's the atmosphere of your head that's your head because you're surrounded by pieces of yourself everything is pieces of yourself if uh -huh. you're on your own head I like that I think that's a neat theory I kind of like that yeah and then it would be a lot going you need to focus on getting to one part of your mind that will result in sanity uh -huh. and the revival of you to consciousness. Yes. And going, no, but all these other things. And it's like, if you get lost in your mind, you'll just never come back. And you'll also take me with you. And since I joined you in your mind, I too will die. Yes. Yes, that one. But I, I just love that. <laughs> I will admire Ilar's eyelashes. We've all been doing that the whole game. Don't worry, honey. It's, it is a, a feature. I <laughs> toast you. <laughs> nice yes. eyelashes, bro. <laughs> I know, right? Good. Well done. Good for you. Good for I... them. Good for them. Mm -hmm. Good for them. I... They scramble to their feet and stand there, staring at the letter like it's a two-headed frog. Ilar... Oh, that's you. Uh, Ilar, did you... Yes. Please, I... not right now. Their voice falters. I want so desperately to ask that it burns my throat, but I hold it, giving them some time. Heart trying to break out of my chest. Finally, Ilar turns to stare at me with such bewilderment that I wonder if I have two hands as well. They turn around, take two strides, look back at me, almost say something, then vanish. Ilar choosing their own choices. I should say something. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> there was your character choices. This feels complicated. For a while, I just stand with my eyes closed, stroking my neck. Ooh, you added an E in there. There is no E. Yeah, I was stroking. looking at that too. I was like, stroking? Stroking. Stroking. It's like, yes. okay, stroke. 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 Uh, take it, tasting the heat, almost hearing the cicadas. I was like, normalize typos, but also get editors. Uh, <laughs> or again, or it might normalize have been typos and get editors, not but. And. Yes, and, and. I. But it doesn't last. The buzzing pushes the memory away, and I open my eyes to reality, sighing. I turn to the abandoned letter on the floor. Who knew you had such a secret? I tuck it safely in my pocket. I'll never let you go. Slumping onto the couch, I rub my temples. Magi are so complicated. Why couldn't I have woken up as a baker? Then the worst I would have had to worry about is burning some toast? Hi, not understanding the oven. Failing to remember how yeast works. I was about to say, oh god, I don't think you've ever then been in baking, and both of us have actually say, been in manufacturing. Forgetting all of your chemistry. Like, bakery manufacturing, and that stuff gets really complicated sometimes. Too late for that. I will just have to survive now and untangle the knots later. Maybe uh, after all this, I will take up baking. I wonder why baking, and if there's a connection to it, other than, you know, Ilar was baking. I was about to say, That's the reason I was kind of thinking of it was because your character goes, something, you know, like baking, uh -huh. Ilar over there. I made you food. I bake for you. I bake, <laughs> I bake for you. Yeah. Aye. Taking a deep breath, I tell myself, rest for 50 breaths, and then return to the task. Gently patting the pocket with my new friend, I whisper, it seems it's up to us now. There's actually no S there. It seem it's up to us now. Oh, it seems... Yeah. No, I, I forgot to mess. It. It's okay. It's fine. You will protect me, right? You'll stay by my side. A trickle of hope flows into me. One. Two. Three. Deep breaths, everyone. Breathe okay. in. Hold. Breathe out. Fifty. <laughs> Fifty. <laughs> Also, if you're watching this and, you know, you wish to adjust your posture, sit up straight, realize where your creaks and uh, cracks are, 
Feel free do to a do a little stretch, now. take a little water. Uh-huh, drink some water. It's a good time for that. Fifty. All right. Time to go. I dodge through the swirling debris and soon stand before the massive desk, corralling my thoughts. What needs to be done? Copy the sigil. Find the black salt. Get something sharp. Memorize the mantra. All tasks are done by reduction. Subtract. Divide. Execute. Brevity is magic. Magic is brevity. Is this new music? Oh yeah, it is new. Nice. Also, there was no is there. We just said magic brevity. Sorry, magic brevity. There we are. I'm adding words. There, they have extra letters. I have, I have to write extra words. My heart is racing again at the thought of touching that awful page. I should tear it out and sink it into the abyss before it's, this is done. Or else it might haunt me for the rest of my days. I imagine ripping it out and crumbling it. Yeah, crumbling it into a ball. Or maybe shred it into tiny pieces. Or set it aflame. I would have said crumbling. It sounds very stiff with crumbling. Mm-hmm. A quiet... It could be, because like some paper is really thick. So you're really so like, I feel like I'm cracks into pieces. crumbling. Yeah. But that also sounds very dry. Yeah, extremely dry. And then it just crumbles into bits as you push it into a ball, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it actually works that way. I'm not familiar with that use of the word. A quiet mewing drifts down from somewhere above, breaking me out of the grim exercise. I stiffen and take a step back. Remembering what Alara said about the dangers that might Is that a grim exercise to pretend tearing the book apart? Like, that makes sense to me. Like, if you're you're sort of like, this is horrible, this book is terrible, this is a grim exercise. I mean, it's not like killing a person. Like, I haven't connected in the same way fiction is in your head. Uh Uh-huh. On the other hand, um, could be a grim exercise because it feels very dark to them. Mm -hmm. Going, I'm just focusing on destruction for coping, which... Coping in this kind of situation could be the grim exercise in itself. Right. Hum. My spine tingles. I swallow. Look up slowly. (gasps) From shadows above the giant shelves beside the desk, a melon-sized black shape pokes out. My throat tightens, ready to reach for something to hit it with. Wait, is the head the size of a melon, or is the whole baby tiny like a melon? I need to know, because that cat is adorable. That is a really cute... cat is made of ink. Your cat has eyes in the dark. Yeah. It's so cute. Yes. The tails almost looks like feathers or something. Uh-huh. It's really cute. A pair of pointy ears rise up from the shape and I inhale sharply. It's a puffy looking black cat. Divarna, you nearly scared the waters out of me. It blinks, sniffs the air, then hops down on the table, making nary a sound. The silence oh, fills it. Is this Mr. Fuzzy Pants? I was like, this should be Mr. Fuzz Pants. I hope Mr. so. Mr. Fuzz Pants. I can't also, remember exactly what the name is. There's was. like, I don't know if that's a window or a door. It looks like a door. It's a little ominous. But as a door way up on the wall, I wonder what else this room can do. I know. Because can you imagine doors way up above the desks, way high on the cavernous walls? Ooh, scary. And going, how do you use? What for? Spoopy, scary skeletons. Spoopy, scary doorways. All right. Um, pointy ears, let's see. It blinks, sniffs the air, then hops down to the table. Reaching out a hand, I hunch down toward it. It approaches me warily, sniffing, glancing around, head Wearily, docked. not even wearily. Oh, wearily. Wearily is like tired. Tired, it is tired. It I think maybe you meant wearily, wearily, because wearily is like exhausted. Maybe it is really Oh, tired. it is. Occasionally wincing. Yeah. So that's a wearily like what sniffing, is... Sniffing, glancing around, head docked, occasionally wincing. It looks, it is messed up. Come. I will not hurt you. It stops just short of my hand and gives me a flat stare. I don't believe you. Ever so delicately, I close the gap and pat it on its head. It immediately purrs deeply and rubs its head into my hand. I shut in pleasure. I tired, I grumpy, I sus. Oh, pet pets are good. I love pet pets. My heart ne- nearly melts. I think melts. It melts. I think melts. We're, we're dropping more letters as we go along. It's I stroke okay. it all over, feeling its lush fur and the extravagant fuzz on its hind legs. It's but got if the it's fluffy very pants. fluffy, then it should not have fuzz. It should have long, glorious right. locks that make it a mop. But maybe, maybe it has the fluffy pants model. Oh. So the really poofy thighs and the smooth lower legs. Oh, yeah. And okay. then you go fuzz on the back of the lower legs and yeah. huge fluffy pants above. Yeah, okay. I've seen cl- cats that look like they're wearing clouds on the top of their legs and they have these skinny little legs below them. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And the, the picture
picture supports that a bit, even if the pictures are interpretive to the letters, to the words. Yes. The, the, yes. I, I just love the idea of going, I pet, I pet, I pet harder. I am full invested in petting. Noom, 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 noom. Here we go. Mm-hmm. By the Divana, fuzz pants, excitement vibrates through me, breaking my voice. Ah, a fuzz pants. Fuzz pants bumps their heads firmly into me and purrs. I was starting to worry about you. Where have you been all this time? Are you hurt? Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, no, no. Wait, no, no, that's me. Okay, okay, I was like, did the cat talk? Hang on. Do you remember me? I read all about you. I read about you in Ilar's letter. I scratch behind, I scratch her behind the ear. I love that. Those are neo pronouns, yeah? Yeah, they are. That's so cute. I scratch her behind the ear. Zemzer, I wonder? Depression makes a grating buzz. Hi, depression sneaks into my head even as I do a joyful activity that is something I like. Sometimes depression makes it hard to enjoy things that you love. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Profound. I am liking this more and more. And Fuzz Pants ducks away, ears flattening, visibly agitated. As he turns around and leaps atop the shelf, I let out a silent, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as he stands and looks back at me, tail swishing. This sounds like a, a whole bunch of memory. Uh-huh. Like, I clearly remember you. I remember your pronouns. I even probably remember, like, how to pet you and that we were close kind of thing. And I'm excited to tell you what I, you know, heard about you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if we've been so attached to our memories, wouldn't we be excited about remembering this as well? All right. Anyway. Wait, where are you going? Z raises one paw and jabs it twice in front of Zer. The gesture is so purposeful that I raise an eyebrow. Z flattens her ears, swishing her tails. Tails? Do you have multiple? Do you have tails? multiple tails? I suppose it's possible, like here and here, but it might also be an extra S. Okay, double, double, double tailed cat. I mean, I'm fine I would with be that. for it. Yeah. Then jumps down, head bumps me, and. Leaps up again. Huh? Oh, what's the matter? Lassie, follow me! Come this way! Come here, dum-dum! I don't you want to be back with your human? Ilar? They'll be so excited to see you. Buzzpants blinks, swishes her tail, then pads off into the gloom. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I, I think so. I've actually never heard anybody ever say it out loud, so I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember if I have. Hey, wait! And they're gone. I say, dejectedly looking up. The beams and joints high above me still seem quite intact. I can't tell at all where the cat has disappeared to. It could probably get to anywhere in the library from there, or even the other places in the tower. For a blink, I wish I am a cat. Do we know it's a tower? Have we remembered it's a tower? Has it been called a tower before? Uh, no, no. We saw the tower on the outside before. Remember, we kept walking, so we literally walked into the building. But that was before we woke up with no memories at all. I am I am assuming, actually, that was a part of the experience, though you didn't know who you were. In the very beginning, we were like, who am I? Blah, blah, blah. Because remember, we oh, started okay. in the garden, and we saw the tower. And, and so walked. our character still remembers that, yes. and has assumed from the beginning that this room is inside that tower. Yes. Okay, I didn't make that connection until now. Yeah, I did. I was like, I've I, I just... Also, meme. For a blink, I wish I'm the cat. I wish that were me. I wish that were me. I wish that were me. God, I wish that were me. Yep, that's the one. I smile, recalling the softness in my hands. Z's as temperamental as their human. <laughs> that fuss pants. Too bad. I'd have liked to bring Zer to who will are. Then again, I might get another earful of... We had to... For... Uh, for wasting, wasting time on directions. Distractions. Distractions. Fuck, I'm not even looking. You can't read either. It's okay. Um, <laughs> welcome to hell. Pardon us. None of us can read at the moment. It's uh, okay. I can almost hear Lars accusing Tom. Like, I gotta give it to you. One of the things is, this is, like, again, still interesting story. It is also, like, the pacing and the way that this is written is really much more of, a, like, a chill, mellow thing that will just fucking put me to sleep. Uh-huh. Like, and I mean that the in the most affectionate kind of way. It's me- so pretty. And the music doesn't help. I'm like, I would just In the turn- best kind of way, if that's what you're going for, this is the way to fall asleep. I would just turn this thing on and fall asleep to it. Like, this is my, my noise for sleep time. Uh-huh. It'd be great. Just put this game on in the background, tuck yourself in, Good night. Goodbye. But also, I've, I'm not having the same problem falling asleep as my, or like, like in the same way as my friend right now. But <laughs> okay. I definitely have it with some games for sure. Yes. Because both of us are constantly tired in so many ways. It's true. Peering up again, I click my tongue. 
You'll be back sooner or later, right? I could use a friend. I pat the paper in my pocket. Me? I mean, I sigh, forcing down the pang of loneliness. Enough. I need to get that spell. I straighten my spine and nod to the journal. You and me, journal. We're going to have it out being like, just you and me. One on one. It's single combat. There we go. Single oily combat. Wait. Uh, singly papered combat. <laughs> Paper cut riddled combat. Oh, Ouch. God. Ow. Can you imagine you're in a, you know, one of those fighting games and your opponent is made of paper mm. and they have the, you know, fighting, I can punch you, kick you kind of thing, but also, you know, the magic moves uh-huh. and they just shoot paper at you and you're like, paper cuts, paper cuts, paper cuts. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Oh, God, that'd be so bad. On the other hand, like, if you have any kind of a bladed weapon, you know, you can deflect everything. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, uh-huh. you, can de- you can defend with wind. You know, it's rock, paper, scissors. Can I was going to say, Thank you, I knew where you were going. Yes. Yes. Just a fighting game that's rock, paper, scissors. Uh Uh-huh. I'd be so into that. It'd be so cool. But you have all these characters who are based off of various properties of, like, rock and paper. Yep. You can have one going more of rock, paper, scissors, and then you have some of them going more towards one thing or another. And you Uh can have some horse, some mixes, and whatever Uh else. But that would be so fucking cool. All of your fighting characters are based off of either rock, paper, scissors, or combo. Mm -hmm. I love that. I would do it. That'd be super cool. You know, a long time ago, I wanted to actually um, design, like, a, a, a story environment where you had the... Not the whole world, but the area of focus was three different kingdoms, and one of them did paper, you know, trees, like basically paper punk, trees, tree pulp, paper, Mm -hmm. and another one did metal punk, and the other one did stone punk, and it's rock, paper, scissors. (laughs) <laughs> and I just thought that would be a lot of fun. That is cute. Yeah. And then the, the, their various different technologies sort of revolve around the primary characteristics of those things, like, you know, levers and fulcrums and slicing things, or like <laughs> the properties of like, you know, paper and combining pulps and making mm-hmm. things from things that are, you know, broken, you know, organic things broken down. Right. And then, you know, like just, you know, the the um, rocks in the ground and, you know, melting, shaping, carving those things. That would be really interesting too, though, because I think in that case, you'd have basically a culture that uh, their industry would be heavily dependent upon like rock for example Mm -hmm. because but the thing is is paper would be mostly dependent on itself like I don't know it doesn't sound like you'd have an have have quite an equal economy there but honestly you could also have a really interesting story there because then you'd have story conflict where they're going this is what our big industry is about and we're really like basically heavily dependent upon you for our basic supplies so this is the overarching powerful you know part of the story until the other elements basically come into play see and i just assumed all of them would be peacefully in trade with each other but in the way that you have foreign kingdoms they all have their very distinctive cultures and it would just be set in that environment Mm -hmm. yeah rather than all of them you know fighting over shit it's like you know what people can get along of course they can no but i just just so many things are about war but i was just saying um, because well because my brain was like you know a fighting story Uh uh-huh but then a fighting story then you have these you know warriors and these giant combats maybe it's a shonen and it's like actually like structured combat is the sport maybe kind of thing anyway a page turns over by itself surprised i make a face you are a temperamental one too aren't you looks around everyone in this room has a mood about them damn it why Cat, moody ilar moody. moody depression moody, moody. book moody. moody the other you know um you not monster also thing. Moody. moody you very moody the entire game hashtag moody and just, this is what we are temperamental temperamental I turned to page 58 with extremely cautious optimism. I would have liked it if, like, we had the other page number, either the first or the second time, so that we knew whether 58 was the one we were on or the one before we saw first or the one after it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, the sort of thing where we're talking about, like, setup and payoff of remembering the page number. It also seems like our memory is ever-increasing, and I wonder if that's supposed to be subtle exposition of you're just supposed to pick it up as a player mm-hmm. or whether they just haven't remembered to point it out in the way that they were previously. Right. Uh, um, that, that has been also again though if your character is just trying to focus on getting through this that would make more sense if they're not pointed out going hang on I remember that. Because they're not they're not focusing on it anymore. That the thing of getting a memory back and going I might understand some of the gravity of you know now finally Ilar's position. Right. And so I'm really just going to focus on this instead of myself as it were. Yeah. Extremely cautious optimism. A quick, darting peek at the sigil. No whispers. I resist the urge to lean in and listen. Strongly. So far, so good. I place upright an overturned pencil holder and pick out a 2B, 3 milli thickness. 3 dash? Or 3 mil? 3 mil. Yeah, 3 mil thickness. Yeah, 3 milli thickness, yeah. And a blank sheet of paper from a stock shelf. Civil post size, 
fine grain. You're so well, interested. you're remembering stuff. You are now. one. That's really super. Like I know what's here in this desk. That's amazing. One, we've just got a specific page number. Two, we totally remember that is fuzz pants, not a you could be fuzz pants kind of thing referred uh -huh. to in the letter. Like, but like this is it. This is a sudden. Like we've got so many memories right here, and also the intense focus on our writing originally and going. It's so pretty. It's such detailed script, and then now moving to a this specific type of pencil, this really specific like, type of paper. That is really exact suddenly, and to me, yeah, that is a shift in your character almost immediately. Yeah, like a really big obvious one. And I'm thinking that's just completely kicked off by the experience with the letter. Uh-huh. I haven't noticed these details. Uh-huh! Thank you! Lost memories trickling in. I love that. But the thing is also, okay, so so being me, uh -huh. that also felt deeply like what I do to try to refocus or recenter on work because I've disassociated from work a lot. So one of the big things that they talk about is basically trying to focus on your environment to talk about the details that are in there. So you'll do something like, here is a 2B pencil with 3 millimeter lead, and then I'm going to use this particular fine cardstock, approximately 110 pound weight, you know, blah, 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 whatever, in order mm. to get you to come into the moment where you are. Right. So, so, I, so I was like, that sounds like me. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> hyper focusing on your environment, just describing everything in it and going, what exactly is here? What exactly is going on? What's the temperature of the air? What am I standing on? Mm -hmm. You know, what am I holding? And describing the components of the task. Yeah, that's a way to pull yourself out of dissociation because you demand access to the reality. This is good. I can do this. I am in my element. Performance of work. Fulfillment of duty. That part I relate to. Yes. No matter how destroyed the rest of my life is, I can work. No matter how much a mess I am with hurting people and awful at friendships and bad in relationships and destroying any like social connections or the state of the like house it's that I'm living in. It's all going to hell. Everything is I going to hell. I can't even function like other than utilitarian wardrobe. I look like a walking, you know, sort of like a thrift store sale. But I will get every fucking job done that you point me at. Like, for someone else. I can go to work. Yes. But you know what? We We're will go to work in the, the next, next one! one. Yay! Yay! So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos. We would very much appreciate it. And it has been awesome so far with the people that we've gotten actually the support from from we have. So thank you very much. Uh, but again, no obligation, no pressure, but we do like seeing new people. It is great. It's also fantastic to hear your opinions and your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Um, please feel free to tell us what your playthrough has been like only when we get to the end of it. But we do also recommend that you go play this game please yes. it is very interesting i'd love to know what your thoughts are actually so far if you agree with us if you don't please let me know why yeah or yeah. if you found something like more relatable or had a different take on it we'd love to hear it yes absolutely um but then other than that i have been scandal and i have been lies and, and it was great playing with you bye, bye.